Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Fool. I've had a few people asking me how I created the gothic text that I showed on the base that you can see on screen at the moment on my Instagram. So I thought I'd go through that in this video and have a look at how to make this gothic text and either emboss it or engrave it onto a surface, for example, a statue plinth. So we'll start with making the text first. And that's quite easy, it's just Shift A and then you're gonna find text brings up your text here and and this is as an editable object so all you're going to do is hit tab and click on edit mode and then you can modify the text into whatever you want and then tab off of it and you're back into normal mode now just in case that your tab menu looks different to me that is because i am using machine tools and that gives me this slightly different pie option but you should still have this edit mode available to you now if we go back and just have that text. Let's deal with the first thing of having a more interesting and gothic font. So I'm just gonna duplicate that with Shift D and we'll have a look at how to change the font. So the way you do this is on our options at the side, you just go into the object data properties, which for this is shown as a letter because it's text and you click font. And at the moment, this is a regular font. And if you want to change this, normally you just click here and you'd have some options of fonts, but we don't have any options. And we need to fix that. And essentially all you do is you can download fonts or use fonts that you've already got on something like Microsoft Word and select them to be able to change that into a new font. And you do that by using this file tab. Now straight away, this comes up with all the fonts that you've got, but obviously you can download more. And I've selected a few and put them into my own folder. So you can see those here, and these are all quite nice fonts for using with either fantasy or gothic sci-fi miniatures. I'll put links to where I found these all for free on the description below, but they're these ones called Stonehenge, Casablanca Antique, and Boer Tudor. I probably pronounced that horribly, but we're gonna have a look at some of those. So all you do is select the font that you want. So for example, if I click Stonehenge regular and click open font, and it will change our text to have that font. And from now on, if I click on the F button, I can see that that's now an option. So let's have a look at those other ones. So we've got this one here. Let's click a duplicate of that. Then we've got our Casablanca Antique, which looks like this. I find this quite useful for being things like on actual documents or scrolls. And if we duplicate that one more time and go to this Tudor one, I find that really useful for on statues. So I've got those three options there, but obviously there are loads of other fonts out there, some of which are free, some of which are paid for. All of these are free from various websites, and again, they're in the description. So if we're gonna make this as a plinth, first of all, let's get the plinth ready so that we've got something to put the text onto. So I'm just gonna bring in a plane. I often find those quite useful for starting with, and I want that 15 millimeters wide. So decent sized plinth, so let's just move that there. So, first thing we want to do, obviously this is a plane, so let's get this sorted. So I'm gonna go into face mode and I'm going to extrude that out by one millimeter. Let's inset it again by one millimeter. Extrude it again by one millimeter and insert it again by one millimeter. Awesome, so that's gonna look fairly nice as the bottom of our plinth. I'm just gonna press E to extrude that out one more time and we'll have somewhere about there. And then just because I've got hard ops, I can do a nice quick trick here to do the other end of this. So what I'm gonna do for this face is I'm going to move the origin to that face. Now, while you'll have a different menu, you'll still be able to do this even if you don't have Mesh Machine, but Mesh Machine's free. Just go and get it, have a look at my settings video of uh, where to find that. And then we're gonna press Alt X and use the symmetry tool, which very nicely does the other end of our statue. So we've got that nice and symmetrical and we're gonna leave that at that. If you don't have hard ops, you can use the mirror tool to do that or you can just continue drawing it how you want. So this is the plinth our statue is gonna stand on and let's get modifying that text. So firstly, I'm gonna select that text, press S and scale it up a decent amount. That's R and X by 90. So there's upright for this, G and Z. In fact, let's just get that somewhere around here. And let's go into putting in our tech. Just to make the undercuts on this a little bit clearer, I'm just gonna put shadow on, on our viewport shading. Some people don't like shadow, it's entirely up to you. And let's go in and edit this text for our plinth. So, edit mode. 
and this statue is going to be a bit of scenery and it's going to be commemorating a great road trader who supplied goods to various systems at very cheap rates but unfortunately was then assassinated by the Imperium for his lack of paying tax. So we're going to call him Joff Boses. Seems like a nice name for this rogue trader. Tab out of that. And then I want this nice and centered. If I go back down to this object properties, I can actually change the alignment to be centered just as I normally would. And that's going to relatively center it over the origin. And then if we just G and move that again, just so it's getting it in the right place. There's going to be a lot of problems with this font if we just want to use it straight away. And if I convert this, I'm going to right click, convert to and mesh, and then go into vertex mode. You can see, I mean, there's a lot of information here. In fact, just for now, I'm going to hide this plinth just to make this really easy to see. But there is a lot of information here. And if we just go in and try and use this, because there's so many points and so many potential sources of error, this is going to cause some problems. So we need to fix this, uh, and that's generally the biggest problem that people have with making this sort of gothic text is how to bring in the font and then what to do to fix it. So let's go through that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a modifier, and we're actually going to use a decimate modifier to reduce some of this noise. Now what we want is we want a planar decimate, okay? And the important thing is if I click apply all here, it's not going to work and people get very annoyed. All I've got to do is tab out of edit mode, OK, and then click apply all. And then if I go back into it, you can see what that's done. It's reduced a lot of those edges that are going across our face. OK, and made this into relatively simple planes with some edges going across to essentially stop this causing problems with those holes that are in the faces. Now, sometimes that's enough, but bear in mind that this is going to be on a 28 millimeter miniature. I still don't need this amount of information and I'm going to quickly go through how to reduce this and there's a few ways of doing this and depending on the text one or the other might be better for you or maybe both and I'm just going to go through what those do so the first way of reducing this is if we select all of them by pressing a and then we click m to merge we can merge by distance now at the bottom here we've got the distance at the moment it's tiny and what this function is going to do is it's going to merge any vertices that are within a certain distance of each other into one so if i make this larger if i do this and change the size okay we can merge certain vertices together for example if i go over here and have a look at this j if i increase the size of this you can see what it's doing is it's just merging certain vertices together where they're really close and this is quite a nice way of fixing certain problems now this can cause problems of its own especially on things like this if i go along one you can see where it's brought in those lines together that's caused a problem here um, and essentially you can fix that in one way for example if i click there and there gg and slide those up so that they're further away press a and then m by distance and then if i change this around let's get that oh no let's get that a little bit lower okay that's going to cause less problems now and it's going to reduce some of those vertices so that's one way of doing it and that is purely merging things by distance and that can be quite a nice solution to some problems and for example here between 0.01 and 0.02 it causes too many issues so for example i could come in here and put change it to point 0.05 and it still causes some issues so yeah bit of a limit on that one with this text so probably not going to use that the other option does a similar thing but instead of merging by distance what it's going to do is dissolve out some of the vertices it's going to have basically the same effect but instead of doing it by distance, it's going to do it by the angle that the vertices are at. And to do that, I just press X and click Limited Dissolve. And here you've got the angle. So instead of being done by the distance between the vertices, it's done on the angle that the lines are coming out of the vertex. So for example, this one here is relatively straight. And if I put this up, and that's going to take forever, so if I just drag, you can see that as I get to certain points, Okay, for example, this vertex here that my mouse is going around, the angle that's between the lines or the edges coming out of it must be about five, six degrees. And as I go over that, it starts dissolving out some of those vertices. And you can sort of take that up 
okay and you'll see it's starting to make my text a bit more angular okay so I can just take that to the point where I think the limit is of what's going to look good that's probably fine <clears throat> can I go a little bit further maybe somewhere about there so that's going to reduce a lot of the clutter on this object and suddenly make it less likely to cause errors I've just got to be careful with these things like internal holes where this can cause a problem if it causes an error so if I come along here, I can see that's caused a bit of a problem. So I can just, so I can just undo that. Let's try that again. X limited dissolve, 10.1 was too much. Go to about there, apply it and we're fine. So let's bring in our plinth. Make sure we're nice and centered on that. That looks about right. I could be a bit more exact, but for this demonstration, it's going to be fine. And I'm just going to add a modifier and let's solidify this object. And we want it to be about one millimeter. Now, this is going to cause a problem. So firstly, this is obviously bigger than a millimeter. Now I have gone and been scaling this, but quite often text comes in at the wrong scale anyway. So it's always worth control A, and scale and that will fix everything so let's G to grab it and move it Y to constrain it to the Y axis and we're going to go in just to the point where it's sticking out so I want this engraved so I need it to look like that if I want this embossed so it's sticking out I'd maybe G and Y and have it sort of sticking out to there it's entirely up to you what you want but I want this to go in by about a millimeter so I'm just going to there click on the object that you want to take out click on the object it's going to be taken out of and if you've got ball tools just control and minus and I'm going to press H to hide that and we've got this nice engraved text for our assassinated rogue trader so let's just have a look how that looks because we want to make sure that it does print okay check all and we've got a few minor issues here if we hadn't done this fix on the text this would be showing a lot of problems and hopefully if I just click make manifold and check again that has reduced all of those problems we've got no issues at all with that just by following those simple steps and if it did cause some problems our normal solutions of putting a triangulate modifier in there should be fine in fact let's apply this and check all again okay make manifold and then we're fine and actually we have got a couple of issues here let's have a look some inset faces just there and as I said add modifier triangulate as we've done in a previous video apply all and then check all and we've got that we do have a couple of non-flat faces let's have a look at that okay we do sometimes get that with our text and that is just a slight problem here you can see that we've got one line here going across okay so all i need to do is let's try a and m to merge by distance that's removed 26 vertices so that might have done it still got our non-flat faces okay just here so we're gonna to have to fix that let's go through how to quick quickly fix that so if we go to vertex and I press G what you can see here is you've got a face here and it's basically this line this edge is on another edge so we can see here that we've got this issue now if I actually just go into edge mode I might so we can see we've got this one long edge that's going all the way across if I just press Control X I've actually been able to dissolve that out we've got another one that should be stopping here if I press G you can see that quite easily that we've still got these two edges if I just click off of that you can see there's one edge there and one edge there if I go back to that we've also got this one edge that's going in the same place so actually we should be able to control X and get rid of that yep and let's have a look check all non flat faces and that problem's gone and then we've got the same one over here okay because it's both with the F's go into edge mode and select the one that goes all the way across so the other option here is to G and Z move that down just a tiny bit so we can see it okay I'm going to go so fractionally that it's not going to make a difference to the font and then select that edge control X and then hopefully that should be if I check all that problem fixed I will actually do another video at some point looking at how to fix some of these issues but hopefully you can see it's not that difficult once you know what you're doing go back to object mode and this looks really nice no problems that are going to cause printing errors and we're good to go here we and here he is 
on his plinth Joff. I was hoping to find someone with a little less hair, but uh, it will do. This is a free file from Thingiverse from Evgeny5. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, I do appreciate this is meant to be an inquisitor, but uh, with some minor removal of that eye, I think he'd look very good as a rogue trader with his ledger book there. Perfectly immortalized on this plinth with his name Ooh. on it. Now, while that isn't too difficult to do for a one-off, I do want to mention this store on Etsy. It's called Battle Bling, and it's run by Johnny Court, who's a really nice guy. And I just want to mention some of the features that are on this site. Now, firstly, this sells physical copies of most of my designs. And I just want to mention in relation to this video, these nameplates that they do for Titans or models of any size, really. Now, if I just go into this, you can see what these look like. And they're really, really good quality nameplates. You can put whatever text you want. You can ask for any size of base that you're looking for. And they do them in a nice range of styles. So if I go here, you can see some fantastic ones. My favorite is this one uh, for any loyalists, but you also have some really nice generic ones uh, such as these or some specific traitor ones. So they're really, really nice. and at the moment they are 10 nameplates of any size for 20 quid and uh, they do free shipping to a lot of different places so go on to battle bling check them out have a look at what they've got to offer honestly they are absolutely fantastic as always if you found something on this video useful please do hit that like button and if there's anything else that you'd like me to do a video on please do feel free to say so in the comments section and i'll see you next time